Welcome to the Fatels podcast. I'm Detective Hom, and this is my co-host, Miss Fatel. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, whatever. So we're here to discuss our fiction, or my fiction, which is the hard-boiled detective crime fiction, in relation to the text of Raymond Chandler's The Big Sleep, and Dorothy Porter's The Monkey's Mask, using the amazing, amazing reading of the typology of a detective fiction. Right, so our main characters within the text that would be referred to often are our first PI, Philip Marlowe. Why, yes, gruff, tough, unlovable, desirable, but very conservative Marlowe. Marlowe's build-up hatred towards women and homosexuals just truly overstate the undeniable ego that he indulges himself in. Yes, the man written specifically for his viewers in which for them to relate to Marlowe both dominating men and women within the text. But then we have our lesbian detective, Jill Fitzpatrick. Our strong lady who depicts herself as a strong, yet she is soft and only trying her best. You describe her much more positive than Marlowe. Of course, women. Moving on to speak about the big sleep in a whodunit sense, what is a whodunit though? In relation to the reading of Torrid and Richard, they argued it's a text that is separated into two different stories. The introduction with the following of the murder, then the investigation. Usually in a text like this, readers reader is allowed to follow alongside the detective with its clue after clue kind of following. Chandler's novel could be described as a whodunit. The reader follows alongside Marlowe within the book, discovering and investigating same places as he does, like Geiger's apartment and more. It is also within a whodunit. The detective himself as Toadov and Richard describes, has immortality. You can never expect anything to happen to him. Marlowe, the neat, clean, shaven, and sober detective. Page one, tee hee. Um, it is left out of dangers. There is an instant where it's a hard pounding as you investigate Carol and Geiger's apartment, and you wonder, will he be caught? But he doesn't. He's fine. He's safe. But even linked to Raymond Chandler himself, who wants to improve crime fiction. It makes the book meta, making fun of the whodunit genre, is con- as it's considered as the golden age of crime fiction, as Todev and Richard state. Marlowe pokes fun of detectives from these books. I'm not Sherlock Holmes or Philip Vance. I don't expect to go over ground the police have covered and pick up a broken pen point and build a case from it. If you think there isn't anyone in the detective visit business making a living that doing that sort of thing. That's on 175. How, how do you, anyhow, in that sense, a big sleep could be classified as a whodunit, but we both know it's not. To move this along, if you wish to define Porter's text as a whodunit, there are connections, as you have the majority of the novel as the investigation, but it does have separate stories. You have the first part of the poetry where we are introduced to Jill and her past, before we even jump into the investigation about Mickey to figure it out. It's refreshing for the big sleep as we get to see Jill's optimism and her true thoughts on the investigation and how she gets swung up with the whole thing with her and Diana. Right, she suits the Humphatel stereotype where she states herself, my voice is gruff like a boy trying to hold his own with a man. Page 35 Overall, both texts don't really suit the perfect ideal who done it, but in relation to the reading, they do tick some of the tick off some of the boxes. Let's get a quick egg check before we move on to the hard boiled and thriller. And we are back. If you want to focus on hard boiled, as we're now going to discuss, it was created in the USA, and it no longer had the beginning where the narrative has. A, the murder part, but it jumps straight into the investigation. It also included curiosity for the reader with the pleasure of reading a story, suspense of like what would happen, and then finally the detective would to take many risks and he loses his immortality and he may get beaten up. Or in this case in Philip Marlowe's state, he's the one beating up both men and women. And we also see Jill Fitzpatrick risk her life by investigating Mickey, but also being undermined by several men within the book. 
this allows for our audience to actually really think about what would actually happen to a detective and if he or she will get in danger. We see this again in The Big Sleep where we have Marlo going through Geiger's apartment and investigating, going deeply, befriending Carmen and doing more of the investigation. And we are sitting there waiting to see if anything will happen. And then we see this in The Monkey's Mask, where through poetry and Jill's inner feelings, we get to connect with her as she investigates Mickey's disappearance and death. We get to follow along and read the poems with Jill and get to see her true feelings. And within both the hard-boiled crime fiction books, they take place in a city, a city being a symbol for corruption, as Marlowe states himself, somewhat that he wants to get rid of this corruption and we see that through his aggression towards homosexuals like carol and geiger and also unorderly women like carmen within jill's hard-boiled crime fiction it has a more feminist approach a city still representing corruption but as we see with diana she's a corrupted woman she has she's a married yet she is going out to openly cheat on nick both Jill and Marlo have this alternative form of justice and closure that they need to solve their own cases. As we come to the end of our presentation, we'd like to say that Dorothy Porter really reimagined the crime fiction genre through her creative approach through poetry instead of writing single-handedly a structured novel like The Big Sleep. Damn, it's soft.